upon last night and strange but true it was the star the very very star that i had wished upon
morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome you today as Howie's pastor from Faith Lutheran and welcome you and I uh, greet you on behalf of our congregation and Robert's uh, funeral home today as we celebrate Howie's life and we come together in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. So today we proclaim Christ crucified and risen and we remember before God our brother Howie. We give thanks for his life and we commend him to our merciful Redeemer. We comfort each other in our grief. I invite you as we take this moment to join me in prayer. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, we ask that you graciously, graciously tend us as we mourn, that casting our sorrows upon you, we may know the consolation of your love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now turn it over to Dominic, who's going to lead us in a medley of hymns. Good morning. How we loved hymns, we love to sing. So this morning we're going to do two hymns. We're going to do uh, How Great Thou Art and um, It Is Well. The uh, ending of How Great Thou Art gets a little weird. I'll try to conduct you. And the beginning of It Is Well is a little slow. So just follow along. Um, feel free to participate any way you feel comfortable. If you want to stand at any point, that's great. The lyrics are in your program. See you. 
the woman to pay all things. The year was 46, where the women picked the beginning of their romance. Two years later, nothing was greater than when Howie and Ellie were wed. The great joy would start as they took their part in the amazing life Girl after girl and curl after curl, the family began to grow. Six kids, many friends. Their life would begin to more. Their life would begin to be more than they could know. The offspring would soar. The count, sixty-four, including all in-laws and blood. He affected so many, touched heartstrings of plenty, as only this kind man. A solid foundation was their creation of family, fun, love, and faith. The years went fast, but memories would last of life's picture that Howard would paint. From life on the lake, steak, rake, and cake, the canvas would fill with great color. Volleyball, bridge, always kept the full fridge. The shade to share meals and desserts with each other. How we all want to be is clear to see when you follow the life of this man. Not many can give and share how to live as well as this great dad can. family nearby on the 4th of July. He took in their smiles and love. Knowing he won, he said, I'm done. And chose to dance with Ellie above. For the many lives that you've touched, we love you so much. <laughs> Thank you for all you've done. We will miss you, Dad. I am so proud and so glad to have been known as your only son. I love Dad.
grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at Faith Lutheran, normally on a Sunday after one of our members dies, and perhaps you've been there if this is the case, it's our tradition to invite the congregation to stand while we remember this uh, beloved individual or this member of our church, and we share a prayer for him and his family. But we all know that this is a different time. However, on Sunday, I still share a picture of Howie. And as I put his picture up and I prayed, the vast majority of our congregation was worshiping at home, watching on their phones, or their laptop, or on their Roku TV like Howie did. During announcements, I can only assume that some people out of habit stood up when Howie's picture appeared on the screen. And together we all pray for it. From our rooms, from our dwellings, we have used this time of pandemic to encourage members to create home altars, to turn in pictures of them participating in their faith, to anoint each other with oil, to commune and to practice communion with each other. But most importantly, to worship together as we have stayed at home. Yes, this pandemic has been awful in many ways, but what I've also learned is that our faith is such an integral part of how we get through this. How we teach our faith to our families. And so in all the busyness of life, as how things were before, I think this has also been a time for our families to slow down and be intentional in sharing that time of faith with each other. I know that mine has. Howie was a regular at our old guy's Bible study, and he was the oldest guy. <laughs> so we would meet on Tuesdays at Keys, and Howie couldn't hear very well. So he didn't chime in as much as he probably would have in the past, but when he did share, everybody got quiet. Everybody wanted to hear the Howie stories. Nobody wanted to miss a story about him serving in the Navy, or taking the honor flight, or tales about his beloved family that's gathered here. And so the day that Howie died, we had old guys the following morning. And we spent this virtual old guys session reflecting on him. We spent about 15 minutes talking about Howie. The very first thing that got offered up about Howie was from Lloyd, who has been in Bible studies, befrienders, and intercessory prayer with Howie, and numerous other activities serving at faith. And Lloyd immediately chimed in and said, I gotta tell you, the thing that I remember most about Howie was the motto that we lived by. You might be the only Bible that someone else reads. And I thought about how much Howie's life reflected out of his faith. And what did we do? We started digging into the, into the Bible. We started digging into the scriptures. We talked about Romans 8. And that line about Howie was ringing in my ears all week as I prepared my sermon. And so from that passage, the main focus was righteousness and how Martin Luther's theology has understood righteousness in two different ways. Righteousness through the eyes of God, which is in our faith. And because we are created by God, God's righteousness belongs to us. There's nothing we can do to earn God's righteousness, that God loves us. It's this righteousness that gives us confidence now that Howie is with Ellie in that room in heaven. That is great news. The second kind of righteousness is what caught my attention and got me thinking about how It's righteousness through the eyes of the world. Our eternal life does not depend on us to be perfect, thank God, but for how we live our lives can make a difference in this world. We are the hands, the feet, and the voice of God. Does that sound like how we? 
And so as we are given that responsibility to care for God's creation, it's how we live, it's how we act, it's how we treat each other that can bring healing. It can bring others into a relationship with God that can, tra can transform their lives. We are made righteous by the world, then how we carry out God's responsibilities for us. So as I was preparing for the week, I couldn't think of a better example of what it means to be righteous through the eyes of the world than sharing that quote about how, how our lives might be the only Bible that someone can see. Even how we witness to the Galatians text and the fruit of the Spirit, these are a reflection of our faith. So I shared that with the congregation, and I talked about how his ability to model his faith as someone who lived out that belief. And people online were commenting and talking about how amazing Howie was, and people who never met Howie were lifting up thank yous and appreciation for all that he had done as a devoted Christian. Howie didn't live this way out of his own glory. He lived it out of the glory of God. I think about how today's service may have been pre-pandemic. Probably would have been a faith blueprint. The church would have been pretty full. People wanted to be here. But they knew that they couldn't. And we all understand this. We all understand why. Many of them were able to come to visitation next week. Probably would have had, in addition to your poem, that beautiful poem, you probably would have had more memories shared about how he giving people a peek into his life. We would have had a delicious luncheon by Bart Carey with those sandwiches, and if you've been there, you know what they taste like. And people would have gathered around you share their stories and how he's impacted them over the years. So today, as the vast majority of you are how he's family, you know those stories. You have that enormous family tree that I'm staring at right there. And those branches each hold wonderful memories of a beloved father and a grandfather. You had the gift of spending his last fully alert day doing the thing you loved the most. Being with you, being with family. On the 4th of July, no less. As we remember why he served our country in the first place. I gave him communion about a week before that. And he was so excited for the 4th of July. I had no doubt was going to make it. As you spent that day with him outside, and the day crept into the evening, again, one of my favorite stories is the game that got played while playing Rummy Coop. And usually there would be many, many rounds of this game, but after one game, he was asked if he wanted to play again. Nope, I did not. And he was. You have seen his faith. It's impacted who you have become. So my message to you comes from the rest of us. From the eyes of the world. What have we seen in your father? And how he has lived his life like it's the only Bible that we would get to read. We've, some, we've seen someone who is graceful Christ-centered, who has inspired us each and every step of the way. And so Howie now is in heaven. That room is prepared. God's gift was something that Howie could clearly see without a shadow of a doubt. Thanks be to God. And Howie's life is also a testament so that he would help so many others to see that gift as well.
us again in another beautiful tribute through the gift of music. Um, I'd first like to thank Pastor John because originally I was supposed to go after Dan. <laughs> <laughs> God doesn't do things, but maybe I was the number one son-in-law, maybe Ellie did it. <laughs> um, but Dan, that was awesome. And in keeping with the spirit of that, I'm going to sing a song this morning called We Are an Offering. And, and five years ago, when uh, we were visiting here in Minnesota, Howie told me that he was going to sing that song on Sunday morning at church. And he told me it's because I, he heard me sing it 25 years earlier at one of my kids' dedications. I had no recollection of this at all. But then again, I was 55 and he was 90. <laughs> that Sunday morning, Howie was on stage. Now, from a musician's point of view, which I am, he was basically totally deaf. <laughs> Yet he sang that song with passion and almost perfect pitch, which is more than I can guarantee this morning for me. I wondered, though, what made him remember that song after 25 years? And as I practiced it, I realized that it was Howie's life. This must have been Howie's prayer, which is why he remembered it. That he would use his voice, that God would use his hands, and that God would use his life as an offering. Howie was an example of someone who got out of the way and let the Lord lead him. God certainly answered that prayer. And if you are looking for a prayer this morning and you want God to answer, this would be a good one to start with. How would you do this? Oh 
Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Howie. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints.
it's our choice. And so as you listen to this um, song, just receive it for what it is and, and what the scripture says God wants to do as and for you. Gracious to you, Lord, turn.
and let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen. I invite Kelly to give us further instructions as we are about to head out to the parking lot for military officers. Thank you, Pastor. Those few moments, we'll all going to go outside to have honors uh, for how we service uh, in the U.S. Navy. So with that being said, everyone please rise. Howie was a proud member of the Force Lake American Legion uh, here, and so therefore we got their honor squad here to present honors uh, for Howie's service in the U.S. Navy. For the moment, as we play the three rifle volleys, they can be kind of loud, so especially for the little ones, you might want to cover their ears. During taps, for all the veterans out there, please salute. Everyone else, please hold your hand over your heart. volley for duty, one volley for honor, one volley for country. On behalf of the President of the United States, the Secretary of the Navy, and a grateful nation, we present this flag to you in honor of our service to his country. Yeah. 
behalf of Howie's family, I want to thank everyone for being with us here today. This does conclude uh, our time here at the funeral home. So again, thank you all for being here. Howie Nessel, grandfather, great-grandfather, father, we're all here because of you. We are all happy because of you. We all, we all learned so much from you. And you were a wonderful man. And your spirit, and your guidance, and your love, and your trueness will live on in all of us. Every day. I know it will for me. May these ashes give this lake a wonderful spirit of you forever. And the winter time and the spring and the fall, you are here for people to remember. We love you, Grandpa. We love you, Dad. We love you, Great Grandfather. We love you, friend. Anyone else? You will be remembered. As you swim out to the deep end and float on your back <laughs> with your man boobs sticking up in the air like mine <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> Lord, thank you for how we nestle. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen.